lift the sternum. Oh, gosh. So I am working with the spinal column to try and straighten this out, get the curves back into the right places because we're going to be going over the diaphragm lock today. I'm going to be taking you through uh, just a tutorial of it so that you guys can understand it better. It is a little bit challenging for people. So um, strap yourselves in and let's break it down. If you're new to my channel, my name is Ashley Osier. I'm the posture specialist. And if you're interested in improving your posture, decreasing pain, and enhancing your overall wellness, make sure to subscribe and click the bell so that you don't miss anything. The diaphragm lock is a part of the three lock mountain. And so far I have done the pelvic lock and I have done the throat lock. Those video links will be at the end of the video so you can check those out. I also have a start here posture basics playlist that I will also put at the end of the video and you can check out all of those videos to get you into tip top shape. The diaphragm lock, it's a multi-step exercise okay so i'm going to just kind of take you through it and then we're going to dive into it a little bit deeper and then i'm going to have a practice at the end but before i get into that i want to ask you a question i will have the answer near the end but i want to ask you this question do you know i'll back up a little bit more the diaphragm muscle which is right here do you know if it is a part of our core muscles that we're supposed to be engaging. Before we get into the tutorial of it, I just want to show you guys, um, the diaphragm is right about here, right? So it's right where the thoracic area really starts to make that curve. So we want to make sure that if we have a natural curve in the thoracic spine, right? So we have a natural Kyphosis. It's just a natural, gentle curve. If we make that even more by slumping, okay, so I get a lot of people who will slump right here, they'll collapse at the diaphragm, they'll collapse here. And I actually just did a video showing how important the throw lock is in. Um, correcting this. So you'll want to check that out. I'll actually put the link up here and um, check out how the throat lock assists in correcting collapsing of the diaphragm. We definitely want to be engaging the diaphragm lock, but if you are not able to really get that down, get into your throat lock and that's going to make a big difference okay but do you see how how extreme that curve becomes when we collapse here okay so we want to we want to get back to that natural natural curve in order to do that right if we're here we have to lift it up. Now this is different from having a neutral spine. I talked about this in my Invisalign versus braces video. I'll stream that up here for you guys. You can check that out, but it is different than having a neutral spine. Okay, so we're active, we're engaged, we're conscious, we're connected, and we also are thinking about our own postural discrepancies. So your three lock mountain is going to be a little bit different than mine. And we want to keep that in mind. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be tightening the diaphragm muscle. We're going to do then a micro crunch. Then we're going to flare the ribs. We're going to lift the sternum and then we're going to drop the scapula. So let's do this. Tightening the diaphragm muscle. It's like any muscle. You just try and contract, contract the upper muscle here. So you might feel like you are contracting your rectus abdominis, this upper part here. If you're going to do a crunch, 
it might feel very similar to tightening this upper abdominal muscle area. So we're gonna tighten this part of the abdomen, okay? Then we're gonna do a micro crunch. So crunching, so you're holding it. I want you to just walk around, you're just walking around. Just those two right there, you feel. Okay, I want you to feel like, okay, I'm really solid right now. And then we're gonna flare the ribs. So flaring the ribs can be challenging for people. This is one of the big challenge areas. So let me see if I can do it without, without getting my mic all messed up. You're gonna take your hands and place them on either side of your ribs and you're going to try and press your ribs out. You're gonna try and flare them out. Okay. So here I am, relaxed, and then I'm gonna flare them out. Watch it. You see that? Now I'm gonna do it without breathing. I'm gonna relax, out, relax, flare, relax, flare, relax, flare, relax, flare. When I do it with the breath, you see how I can ex really expand the ribs out. And what that does when you're doing breath work, for example, and I've done a couple of videos on postural breath work and then teaching you the wave of breath and how to increase your lung capacity. I'll put that down either at the end of the video or I'll stream it up here. But when we're working with the breath and increasing lung capacity, being able to expand those ribs out is absolutely essential and it's fantastic. So I also want to encourage you to practice that and learn that technique. In terms of posture and correcting posture, what we're doing is we are increasing the space between the ribs and exercising those intercostal muscles, right? So we're strengthening the muscles. They're little micro exercises, right? So a lot of this is micro fitness. And I wanna encourage you guys to kind of change your thinking. A lot of our uh, fitness is focused on macro muscles, these big muscles. We're trying to exercise all the big muscles. But usually where people get injured are at the attachments. It's these small little attachment areas where we pull or strain a muscle, right? Or an attachment, a tendon, a ligament, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna focus on increasing the fitness level where we are most vulnerable. So if I engage this whole part, I'm really lifting and I'm expanding those ribs. And then I hold that. So that's those three steps. It's just three parts of the diaphragm lock. Then we're going to lift the sternum. When we're lifting the sternum, it is trying to make space between the vertebrae, okay? So that the discs float freely, right? We have nerves, you see these? We have nerves that come out on either side of the spine. So we wanna make sure that those nerves are not being impinged in any way, shape or form. So we're lifting, we wanna lift, you see that? We're lifting, really kind of pulling up on the sternum. If you're normally like this, you're gonna lift the sternum. Okay, just like that. So we're not leaning forward, not, we're not pushing the chest out, nothing like that. We're just lifting straight up. Now, if you're doing the flare, it's gonna look like this. Okay, do you see how it just opens everything up? We're not pushing the chest out, we're just lifting like an elevator. And I have that in the main Three Lock Mountain video. I'll stream that up here too for you guys. And it's very, very important when you guys learn how to flare those ribs and lift that sternum up, you actually might get an adjustment out of your spine. If you do, I'd love to hear it. Leave me a comment down below, okay? The next step is to drop the scapula. So, here we go, dropping the scapula. I'm not dropping my shoulders. This is different from, you see that? So dropping my shoulders is like this, dropping my scapula is like, You see the difference? Okay, I'm gonna show you from behind. 
So I'm dropping my shoulders, dropping my shoulders, dropping my scapula. Okay, you see the difference? So there are your five steps, the diaphragm lock. So now we're going to practice. Before we practice, I'm gonna give you the answer to the question that I asked you in the beginning about the diaphragm being a part of the core muscles. And that answer is yes. The diaphragm is actually a part of the core muscles. It is a stabilizing muscle and it really helps to stabilize the spine when we engage it. So we want to make sure that we are not losing this diaphragm lock. You wanna make sure that you have your three locks so that you're stabilizing the spine in all of your movements and everything that you're doing, whether you're bending or twisting or whatever it is, you don't want to lose your three locks and especially this diaphragm lock. Let's practice. Here we go. Tighten, micro crunch, rib flare, sternum lift, scapula drop. Okay, again, tighten, micro crunch, rib flare, sternum lift, scapula drop. From the front, just be in like your regular posture, Tighten, micro crunch, rib flare, sternum lift, scapula drop. Again, tighten, micro crunch, flare, sternum lift, scapula drop. All right, you did it. That is awesome. The diaphragm lock is tough. It is hard. It is really, it's really hard work, I know. You may even feel yourself sweat by practicing this. If you feel tired, you're working out. It's a real exercise, folks. It really, really is. So. I'd love to hear how you do with it. If you have any questions or anything, just leave it for me in the comment section, or you can check the information that I have, my contact information in the drop box down below. I will have my playlist and video links that I think would be useful for you guys in the drop box down below in addition to at the very end. So make sure to check all that stuff out. Okay, and like this video if it's helpful, share with your friends and your family, and make sure to follow me on Instagram because I have other stuff going on there. And, um, and I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, for supporting my channel. And until the next video, happy posturing. <laughs>